Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, Kim Seltzer, a dating and makeover expert, where I will help you build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. Plenty of exercise, healthy food, positive attitude, plain old good luck. I mean, there's lots of advice out there uh, about how to keep the body and the brain in optimal shape as the years roll by. But what about the positive impact of human relationships? I mean, there is a newer field that has been growing and probably even more important now than ever before as we head into the world of AI and technology, and that is interpersonal neurobiology which is based on the recognition that humans are best understood not in isolation, but in the context of their connections with others. Our brains are actually social organs, and that means that we are wired to connect with each other and to interact in groups, a life that maximizes social interaction and human-to-human contact is good for the brain at every age. Now, particularly for the aging brain, because we're going to talk about that, how we bond and stay attached to each other is the core of your resilience, your self-esteem, and of course, your physical health. And when you feel connected, you have high self-worth and are healthy, and that is when you're able to put yourself out there where you attract people in your life. When you're feeling lonely, lethargic, and your health isn't good, it's hard to feel like flirting and dating. Let's just face it. So this is why most of my dating programs are now community-based, whether it's through a program called Kimmy's Love Hub. I do all these dating retreats, as you know. And I see the importance of having other tribe members who are just like you, where you can find support in each other, feel connected, and create more opportunities to meet other people. And I've seen even people with depression and health issues improve when there's a sense of belonging and connecting. And now, as more people are becoming single later in life, research has shown that connection is good for aging overall. And research has, researchers have found that those who spent more time cultivating social relationships had a significant drop in cortisol levels. I think that's so interesting during the day, which could explain why positive relationships help us learn better, stay healthier and live longer there. You know, obviously I've worked with so many people, but there was this one gentleman who had a bunch of health issues. He was trying to get back out there and date. He's in his fifties. He was overweight. He had like knee issues. He felt like the aging process really taking a toll on him. And he's like, how am I supposed to go out there and date? I don't feel sexy in my body. I feel old. I'm too like old to do this flirting thing. And so he joined my group retreat program. And what was so beautiful to watch is that as he started connecting with other people, he realized that that was a big hole, that the reason, one of the reasons why he fell into almost a state of depression is because he had a lack of friendships, more specifically, a lack of single friendships. And so as he got into the tribe of the people in the retreat, his mood started lifting and he started getting into an exercise routine and he started really like putting himself out there, even with his health issues. And he actually ended up meeting a woman in his building. It was incredible to watch. And he couldn't believe it. He's like, you know, if it wasn't for this group and holding me accountable and really taking care of my health, I don't even think I would have said hi to that woman. And, you know, from that point on, his self-esteem rose and he's really like building that confidence even as time goes on. So I like to think of social interaction and connection as almost a type of social biohacking, to be honest. With me on the line today, and this is what brings me to this guest that we have, is an actual biohacker who has cracked the code in the aging process by making simple tweaks to his sleep, exercise regime, and diet, including getting eight hours of sleep every night, which is commendable, by the way. (laughs) Not too many people can do that. I want to hear his hack exercising six times a week and intermittent fasting. So we are going to have a interesting conversation on longevity, connection, and health overall, and how that all impacts your love life. He is the founder and CEO of 
Consumer Longevity Biotech Novos. I hope I'm saying that right. He's going to definitely share that today. It's Slow My Age, which tracks lifestyle, self-experiments, and biological data and explores how he has successfully reversed his biological age. And those of you who are watching this on YouTube, you'll see what I mean and what he means by like he's he's actually reversed his biological age by more than one third, a result that prompted the leading biological aging lab to state. Quite frankly, we haven't seen a score this good. <laughs> and he has been following a healthy lifestyle since he was 16 years old and suffered a brain tumor, which left him bedridden and acutely aware of his mortality. After the experience, he decided to focus on longevity to avoid ever being in that position again. Welcome, Chris Mirable. Did I say that right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, close close enough. No, say, wait, no, say it again. Say Mirabile. 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 So you say, so you say it so much sexier, by the way, too. <laughs> anyway. Mira, Mirabile. That's how Mirabile. You know, Mirabile. I usually tell okay. people to say it. Well, now nobody's going to forget it because we just like really like focus on it. <laughs> anyway, it's yeah, I was really interested in this conversation. And it was funny because you and I were talking off air, like, how are we going to tie what you do and what I do together in this podcast? But I actually think it's all related. So I was just super excited to have you on. Um I guess I wanted to start with your story. Like, that's incredible that you went from suffering from a brain tumor to where you are now. I would love for you to just kind of share how how you survived that and then, you know, what inspired you to get into all this. Sure. So it happened when I was a teenager. Uh, I was already quite healthy at the time. I was reading Men's Health Magazine uh, since I was 12 years old and exercising in my basement of the home I grew up in and... Uh, so it was that much more of a surprise to me when I, I suddenly woke up on a school trip in New York City with blood all over my shirt because I had had a seizure unexpectedly. And they rushed me to the emergency room and they found a large, larger than a golf ball size brain tumor on my left temporal lobe, uh, bumping up against the hippocampus and uh, the memory center and uh, see surgery on me. So it all happened very quickly the course of about four days from discovery to radiation and operation. Fortunately, it was successfully removed though. Um, you know, half of my brain is missing. Um, I'm just kidding. I, I joke about that. Uh, <laughs> you would just never the golf know. Ball size. <laughs> right. uh, that's the excuse I give if I, if I forget something or my girlfriend calls me out on something, it's like, well, I you know, I love that. I'm missing half my brain. <laughs> well, that's so funny because I use the blonde hair in the same way. But anyway, we digress. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, mo most of the, uh, it really hit me after the operation. And when I was just reflecting on what I had just been through, playing on the high school football team to spending my Friday nights and poetry about my experience and uh, just complete transformation and, and growth, I would say. And uh, it, it, it taught me an appreciation for life, how delicate it is, how fragile it is, uh, what I wanted to get out of life. I wanted to kind of take control of my life rather than just you know, living passively through it. I want life for myself that I wanted to live and Part of that came from, you know, or, or part of that manifested as me becoming an entrepreneur. Uh, but it also planted a seed for me to have like a deep interest in what is now known as longevity. At the time, I didn't think of it that way. But having been laying on a hospital bed and wondering whether I would wake up the next day and not knowing whether I would, uh, I never wanted to be put in that position again. And so that was that seed that has blossomed over time into my deep interest, or I would even say passion for the field of longevity. Wow. That's incredible. You know, it's such a hero's journey story, if you will, but also like how it takes sometimes adversity when you're going through it, that kind of thrusts you into what you are passionate about today. And yeah, no, that's incredible. So then what happened after that? Like, how did you get into what you're doing right now? 
Well, it's, it's, it's kind of a, a long journey. I, I went uh, from there to, I studied at NYU Stern, the business school, and uh, was doing some entrepreneurial stuff there, but uh, I ended up graduating, going into private equity banking. You know, I got ah. kind of pulled into the allure of, of, uh, of, of that, that world, uh, but I only stayed in it for one year, all the while working on a startup concept called Hot List, which I ended up winning NYU's business plan competition with and started that business and raised funding. And that was a whole roller coaster ride of a startup journey. But, um, and, and throughout, you know, my, my life, since I graduated, I, I have been in entrepreneurship, but in my personal life, it has really been focused on health. I mean, that's been my passion, whether it be exercising or experimenting with different diets or sleep hacks to improve my sleep or different supplements. I mean, ultimately with the goal of just like being the best version of myself, how, mm -hmm. how can I outdo myself? How can I get a new personal best in some athletic endeavor? How can I focus better at work, think more creatively, improve my memory, just like uh, enjoy life that much more, just be that much more present. All of these things is just part of my personality I, that that I I want for myself, and so experimenting with different aspects of health, and you know, as many people call it, biohacking to one degree or another, is how I was able to, uh, you know, uh, realize that those those desires. About ten years ago, through this process, I was digging into scientific papers. I would go on this website called PubMed, which is where you can find tons of scientific papers, almost all of them. Or at least listed there, and I was I was doing some research, and I came across a study called the Hallmarks of Aging, which is now considered the seminal paper. It identified at the time what was known as the nine hallmarks of aging. So, hmm. of scientific studies, and then they find found the commonalities across different animal species, and what were the factors that, first of all, increased with age, but also would cause aging. In other words, if you like sped up one of these hallmarks or mechanisms, you would also accelerate the aging process. And if you slowed it down, you would decelerate the aging process. Mm -hmm. And so these were known as the mechanisms or hallmarks of aging, essentially the causes at a cellular level for why we get older. Things like mitochondrial dysfunction, uh, stem cell uh, rejuvenation, epi the epigenome, loss of proteostasis, big words. I can explain all of them if you care, but I don't, I don't <laughs> think uh, we'll, we'll do that at least in, in, in this interview. But uh, that then got me, it gave me a new lens through which I could look at health and wanting to preserve mine for as long as possible. Like I said before, never wanting to be laying on the hospital bed again with a chronic illness. Uh, so I could then look at the things I was doing or the things I wasn't doing and determine if these were going to be positive or negative according to these fundamental biological causes of aging. Uh, since then, it's increased to 12. Uh, last year, this, the original authors of that paper uh, for the 10-year anniversary added an additional three based on scientific research. And uh, I set out to experiment on my own, eventually start a company that would target those hallmarks of aging with the purpose of slowing down uh, our aging. Wow. That's incredible. Well, and it really, it, it, it kind of highlights, you know, the, about balance, right. And, and as we age, it's, it's not just one thing. I mean, even with what you said, there's different components to look at in your life to really like feel young again and to have the energy to go out because I mean, at the end of the day, like even with what I was saying in the beginning, whether it's having, you know, more of a tribe and that social connection, whether it's having skin that looks amazing. And I do a lot of makeovers. So I help people, you know, look and feel their best in their outfits. Like it all is intertwined and it all like builds on somebody's sexy confidence to actually, you know, feel worthwhile and go after what they want, you know, whether it's in business or love. So I think it's incredible. Like, so how does it exactly work? Like if you can explain a little bit more about Novos. Sure. So, so Novos as a company, there are three legs to the company. The first leg is formulations. The second is biological age testing. So you can see uh -huh. how you're doing with your lifestyle. And um, if you are taking supplements and then the third is free resources. So I established Novos as a public benefit corporation. 
differently so I could go beyond focusing solely on profit and maximizing it, but I could also do things for humanity at large and the general public, even if it wasn't the most profitable endeavor. And so those are the three legs. Uh, the first being the, the formulations. Uh, I, we teamed up with world-renowned scientists from Harvard Medical School, MIT, the Salk Institute in California, where you are, um, and across the world, really, uh, to help us co-formulate our uh, our products, especially our flagship initial product, Novos Core, the very first formula ever created in the world to address all 12 hallmarks of aging simultaneously. Wow. And uh, we've done a number of scientific studies finding things like we can reduce DNA damage from irradiation and from chemotherapeutics, reduce a process called oxytosis ferroptosis, which leads to, or it's correlated timers and cancer, reduce cellular senescence, which is when cells turn into this zombie-like state, and it can lead to things like skin wrinkling or hardening of the arteries, and it goes up exponentially as, as we age, we were able to reduce the size of senescent cells by more than 50%. And we even did a, a case study with people, uh, half male, half female, aged from their 30s to their 70s. And we took a biological age test before taking our products and after six months. And we found that we were able to slow down the rate of aging for 73% of the participants by on average, the equivalent of one month per year. So just imagine the idea of uh, perhaps having one extra month of healthy living per year uh, that you're, you were taking the product, um, at least theoretically, that's what the, the study um, implies. And then 0% of people accelerated their aging. Despite lifestyle stressors, you would expect some people would have had a faster pace of aging over those six months. Maybe they're drinking too much or they're overwhelmed with work or personal life or not sleeping well, and nobody did. So that gives us uh, the hope that it's actually the Novos product, the formula, that is actually blunting the negative effects of stressors and actually wow. keeping those people at baseline. So, um, and for the geeks out there, the p-value, the probability that this is just mere coincidence was less than one in 1,000, which is beyond what scientists typically need, which is typically only uh, 5% uh, p-value. So uh, so that that's our, our formulations. Then our, our biological age testing, we measure something called the epigenome. The epigenome is a layer that sits on top of our genes. And, uh, you know, everyone thinks like, you know, your genes are your destiny, but that's actually not the case. Uh, when it comes to health and longevity, for the vast majority of us, between 80 to 90% of it is really dictated by lifestyle and environment. And only 10% of our aging process is based on our genes. And the reason for that is this epigenome. So the epigenome is which genes are turned on and off. So if you think of your genes as like the piano keys, your epigenome is the song that's being played on those piano keys. And as we age, maybe when you started, you were playing Tchaikovsky, a beautiful song, right? Uh, like when you're young, but then by the time you hit 50, 60, 70, you start keys or you're off rhythm a little bit. So the, the pattern, it's not ideal anymore as you get older. And scientists have devised these algorithms to be able to use that to then determine essentially how old you are biologically, which you, you talked about earlier in terms of, of, of my biological age. And I'm happy to explain what that actually means because I didn't literally age in reverse. Like I still look like I'm, I'm in my thirties. I'll, I'll be 40 next month. Hopefully I look on the, on the, you look you know, younger. Younger I'll be it. honest. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you the money later. Um, yeah. You're welcome so. under the table. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. What, so what is that more or less when you're talking about that, that age biological that? age? Mm -hmm. Sure. So, you know, we all, we all know our chronological age. That's, that's how many birthdays we've had. Uh, right. biological age is essentially, it's a, it's a measure to try to determine how fit we are biologically, which essentially comes down to our morbidity risk. So the chances that we get a chronic illness, our mortality risk, the chances we pass away from a health complication or, or chronic illness, as well as our cellular fitness. So like our quality of life me measures, right? So when you're young, you're very, you can be very fit and agile and uh, very sharp and so on. 
And so that would be a younger biological and chronological age. And so as we age chronologically, we want to do everything we can to be the youngest biological age um, possible, right? And so Novos as a company is really focused on slowing down that pace of aging so that for each year, for example, rather than aging one year biologically, we help people with knowledge information to the point of the free resources as a public benefit corporation, but as well as with our formulations to slow down that rate of aging, which might sound kind of crazy at first, but intuitively it makes sense when I position it as we all know that 60 year old who looks like they're 75, they're smoking a pack a day, they never get off the couch. And we know that 60 year old who looks like they're 45, who's active on the dance floor, ate a whole yeah. foods diet, has been physically active, and they look very different. If you compare their pictures side by side, you would say one person looks much younger than the other. That's a, a, a physical aesthetic manifestation of what is likely happening internally for those two people in terms of accelerated biological aging and decelerated biological aging. For somebody with half a brain, you're really smart. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'll take yeah. that as a compliment. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's a total compliment. And, you know, it's it's really just interesting. I wondered, again, because we're talking about all how all this works together, you know, whether it's having more friendships and social interaction, feeling good in your clothes, feeling good, you know, internally with the, the stuff that you're talking about. Were there any studies done about the happiness factor? You know, like as people were feeling better about themselves, did you, did, was there any like psychological impacts that you know, people have been looking at and following and also in terms of like, how has it improved their lives overall? Yeah, so so a, a few things I can note, some of which I have stats for, others that I don't, but specifically mm -hmm. about happiness and optimism. Yeah. So pessimists have a 42% risk of death at any given point in time than optimists do. Wait, can so you say just that again? Because you cut out a little bit and I, sure. it's so important. I want people to hear that. A, a pessimists have a 42% higher risk of death at any given point in time than optimists do. And that can be biological. It could just be situational, but overall just higher chance of death. If you're a pessimist, than if you're an optimist, uh, another thing is that people who perceive themselves to be younger, just look in the mirror. They think they're younger. They just act like they're younger. They are also associated with younger biological ages. So there is something to that psychology, most likely. Now, the question is how much of it is causal versus correlation. Like, like for example, somebody might think they're, they look younger because they actually do look younger, but there is something to it where it's also just that mindset most likely is also having a positive effect on cellular health. And then to the point about relationships, which, which you emphasize, obviously, uh, there's a study that found that maintaining a healthy social network can help you live up to 50% longer. And then when it comes to relationships, it's it's found that the magic number is ideally about three solid, healthy, positive relationships. That's where you get the most significant positive effect on, on your health is when you've got three solid figures in your life. And it can be any kind of relationships, right? Just to be clear, it doesn't have to sure. necessarily be like romantic. It could be like a positive no. friendship. It could be a family member, right? Yeah. Exactly. See, exactly. And this is so, so important. And it's funny because I mean, without doing like scientific studies like you do, I've seen the impact of what you're saying, you know, just like when people really take care of themselves and they institute a healthy lifestyle, how much better they're able to attract people in their life, period. And because of that, they're happier. You know, it's all, it's all again, intertwined. So I have like a, a, an interesting question because I mean, we've been doing a lot of like technical talk, which I think is super interesting. How has this impacted your love life? 
<laughs> I don't know if it's been a good thing or a bad thing. I mean, <laughs> in, well, in terms either of way. my, yeah, yeah. I mean, in terms of my 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 interest in it and and the you know the way that I I live my life, which is like you know I am strict with my bedtime. Uh, weekends yeah. I I stray. Same thing with diet. I'm strict with my diet. Weekends I stray. Um, but you know, I'm a little bit less flexible than the average person is. Who's just like a little bit more spontaneous with things. So I don't know, you know, you need the right mate who is, uh, is, is, you know, willing to, uh, to live a, a similar lifestyle or at least accept it in, in you. So, so I'd say like, if, if there is, you know, a, any bit of strain, there is a little bit there, not, not a ton, but a little bit. Uh, but overall, I think, I think it's, it's positive, uh, you know, the, the, first of all, like the self-confidence that comes from mm. just feeling younger and, 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 and being told you, and then also being able to accomplish, uh, goals that you set out for, like for me, for example, um, every decade I, I set like a really sick, um, aggressive goal, um, on the, for physical fitness. So when I was turning 30, I was starting to feel old. And so I set a goal, to outdo the Guinness book of world records for most pull-ups in 60 seconds. And, um, I did outdo it, although you the did? submission wasn't, ex yeah, the submission wasn't accepted for its own reasons, but I did outdo it. Now turning 40, my goal is to run a mile faster than I ever have before. And, um, last week when, when I last tried, I hit a 538 mile and I need to get into about 520 to, to hit my goal. So I'm getting there. I'm getting closer. Um, so like to, to be able to accomplish these things, uh, as I get older, it makes me feel, it makes me feel even better than I did in my twenties, to be honest, because like, I have that much more knowledge and experience and wisdom from growing older. I'm that much more comfortable in my own skin as I'm older. At the same time, I'm still accomplishing the things that I was able to do when I and that I feel like that's just a really healthy place to be in psychologically and physically. Oh, yeah. Well, isn't it the best of both worlds when you can age and have that wisdom with, with the experience that you get with age and still like look and feel your best as you age? I mean, I can't think of a better combo than that, you know? And so, yeah, no. And, and I, I really thank you, by the way, for just being candid. And I think so much that that structure and the self-discipline can also really work well with dating lives too. Cause I have so many people complaining that, oh, well, they don't have time for this or they don't have time for that or they don't, you know, and if you don't make yourself a priority and have that discipline to put yourself in that state, then that's when I see a lot of people like not doing well, or they fall into that burnout or negativity. And so I think what you said is really important, like the routine of even knowing what to do for yourself, that biohacking for yourself is so important. So no, I, I, I really appreciate it. Would, yeah. I, I, yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I think, I think that routine is the key, right? So yeah, it is. it's not about like doing things like you know, each and every day, like setting a routine of like my, my weekday, like diet is so boring. It's like the same things, <laughs> the same healthy vegetables and fish and chicken and so on that, you know, I eat every weekday. It's the weekend where things get spiced up and more exciting. And I have something to look forward to, but it's just, uh, you know, the time I go to bed on the, on the weekends and like my routine of like dimming the lights, actually I have hue light bulbs that I turn red it, um, at night so that like my circadian rhythm, I can fall, I fall asleep, like within five minutes of touching the pillow, um, because of the routine that I follow. So then I get really good, solid sleep. And then I wake up with higher energy motivated to exercise. If any of these things are off, if your diet is really off on one of these days, or your sleep is really off, or you don't, uh, you're not physically active. Any one of those things can then break the rest of the, the process, the rest of the day, the rest of the, the routine. So at some point you really just going to go for it, do a strict routine for the whole week. And like every Monday myself, I'm going to, you know, be strict for this routine and follow it. And then everything kind of falls into place naturally that way. Well, you know, what's brilliant about what you're doing. I don't even know if you realize this, but you're giving yourself a reward by maintaining that routine. Right. And I love that you also sprinkle in 
a little spontaneity and spice, like even just spicing it up, you know, with your food or allowing yourself to like cheat. I think that's so important. Even like with dating, I tell people all the time, like it's important to maintain a routine to build your confidence, but don't be so rigid that, you know, like if something doesn't go right, then it's like a heavy hit, right? Like, or it's a, a sense of rejection for yourself or with other people that sense of spontaneity and reward for yourself is actually healthy. So again, what we're talking about is balance, right? Like with all of this, in order to be healthy in your love life, to be healthy in your body, like you have to be like balanced and all. And anytime there's something that's of imbalance, that's when things go awry. So yeah. And and I guess my last question is, because you mentioned something that's really important, that's motivation. Like, what would you say to somebody who is having a hard time with that balance and motivation to keep some sort of routine or like if they wanted to incorporate the Novos way and they're like, I know I should, but they just can't like motivate themselves to start. Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. I mean, it's going to vary for everyone. Um, the first thing that came to mind when, when you said lacking motivation was what me thinking back to my late twenties, early thirties, when I had the most extreme form of a lack of motivation, I was depressed. Mm -hmm. Um, I was chronically depressed. I I had something called anhedonia where nothing would actually bring me pleasure. Um, and I was, I was dating someone, but I, I didn't even find pleasure through that. Uh, and going out with, with friends, hardly found any pleasure from that. And so in that case, it was really, really difficult. Um, the only thing that kept me afloat was just having, this hope and this vision for a better future, like having this desire to, to be in a, in a different place, knowing that this is not how I want to live my life. And so from that, I found myself, you know, doing research and going online and like reading and trying to figure out different tips and whether that be like through scientific studies or podcasts or going on Reddit forums and seeing what people were saying there, just I, I was motivated at least to try to find a way out. And so I guess what I take from that is is really just having um, having a, a strong, vivid image of what you want for your future. Like imagine what that future is that you want, but then also contrast that with a strong vision of what your future will be like if you don't take action. In other words, if, if if you continue to do things the way you are and you recognize a problem in that and you fast forward, you imagine five years or 10 years from now, where does that take you? And then imagine like your dream scenario, if you do take action of where you could be in five years or 10 years and seeing the two of those things side by side contrasted, if you like meditate on it and you close your eyes and dream about it. It's such a vivid contrast that I have, at least for myself, found that to be very motivating because the negative outcome is scary to me. And I would feel like a failure if that's where I ended up in 10 years and the positive, I would feel on top of the world. And that's enough to get me off my butt and up doing what it is that I needed to do to get there. I love that advice so much. And, and, and you struck a chord, I think, in a way that you probably don't even realize because there are so many people, not just with health, but just even with dating, it's hard to motivate and to think of, well, what would it cost you if you don't do this? Like how much time do you want more to go by? You know, and I find that when people don't, you know, like get a coach or they don't like do something good for themselves. And then another five years goes by, like, what's that going to cost you? You know? So I yeah. love that you said that. That's awesome. Chris, you're great. Like, thank you so much for coming <laughs> on. You. I know like it, it, it was definitely more like technical and different than I've ever had before in the episode. And I loved it. Like it was just like a breath of fresh air to think about like just our longevity and health in a totally different way and how it impacts our lives and in many, many ways. So thank you. And to let everyone know like how they can find you and the product and all that. Sure. So I have a personal blog. It's slowmyage.com. I'm on Instagram, uh, X, and recently uh, TikTok as Slow My oh. Age. Yeah, I don't really use TikTok, but my team is like, you got to be on TikTok. So you know, <laughs> I'm not the best with it, but Instagram and X mostly. And uh, and then my company, Novos, you can find uh, 
novoslabs.com. And then we're on all of the social networks as novoslabs. Great. Can you say the website one more time you cut out? Sure. Novoslabs.com. Awesome. Awesome. Chris, thank you so much. Of course. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So thanks for joining me today. This has been the Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, of course, Kimmy Seltzer. And remember, you can build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. And if you want to know more, make sure you go to my site, as always, KimmySeltzer.com. If you haven't heard, I have a special retreat coming up in June. It's just for women, and it's called Spark Your Sexy. And it's you know, it's going to be amazing. I only have four spots left, but I wanted to hop on and let you know about it in case you were interested. This is to ignite what I call the five F's, fun, friendship, fashion, flirting, and femininity. So if you are interested, definitely contact me. You can do that by going to askkimmy.com. That's askkimmy.com. And we can see if it's a fit. All right. Well, hopefully we can chat about that sooner than later. And remember, working on you is working on your dating life. That's all for now.